Morning everybody. Week seven of lockdown. Hope you're all doing okay. Um, please keep in touch. Send me pictures of uh, tutorials that you've completed. My email address is on my Facebook page and on uh, you can send comments actually on the tutorial at the bottom. Um, please subscribe. Uh, if you subscribe, you get updates and uh, advanced notices of when tutorials are going to be uploaded. Today, I'm going to show you how to use some watercolour pencils. Now, I've got these from WH Smith. You can get them almost everywhere now. Um, but they're really useful for, especially if you go out painting, um, they are far easier to transport than a set of watercolours like this. You can basically just sketch with them and then just take one brush and a small pot of water uh, and I'll show you how to do it later on. I'm also going to show you two techniques today. Um, one is splattering and the other one is using um, shavings from the watercolour pencils and it will create this effect that you can see here which is uh, a lot of dots on the paper. So I'm just going to show you the two separate techniques. So all you need to do is uh, have a brush and some water and just on one side of your test sheet just wet it. Now my water's a bit dirty there. <laughs> Sorry about that. My, actually, my brush is a bit dirty, but it doesn't matter for this technique. Make sure you use clean water. And what you're going to do with this one is you're going to take your pencil, your watercolour pencil, and you're going to shave it. So you're going to use a little bits. So I use a knife to sharpen my pencils rather than a sharpener. If you don't know how to use a knife, you hold your pencil like this firmly and you run your knife along the length of the pencil. So I'm just going to shave into this pile here. I'll show you a bit closer, like this. Can you see? So you're just taking the little bits off the end into a pile like this using a knife. So again, hold the pencil tightly and then push the knife slowly down the side of your lead. Okay? So remember that this surface is wet here. And we're going to just take up, I've got some orange, and we're just going to sprinkle the sharpened watercolour part of the pencil onto the wet surface like so. So I've got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange and a bit of dark red and a tiny bit of black. And what you do is you just leave that to dry and what happens is because the wet the water the paper is wet underneath it absorbs into the shavings and spreads out a little bit and then once it's dry you brush off the excess and it should leave little speckles like this underneath. Okay, so that's one technique, that's using the shavings. The other technique is just simply to use a stiff brush. So an acrylic brush is ideal. You can use um, also a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. And you literally just need to wet it and dip it into one of your colours. So let's use this yellow, like so. And it needs to be, so it's it's covered the brush, but it's not dripping wet. Don't have it dripping. And then all you do is be careful of what's around your paper, because obviously it's gonna splatter everywhere. And you literally just flick like that. Just gently flick the ends of the brush like so. Wash your brush off, wipe it off on a, on a bit of paper towel, dip it into another colour and then repeat. And 
there you have it that's called splattering and you can do that as much or as, as little as you require so those are the two techniques splattering and using the sharpenings of a watercolor pencil so there are your little test pieces and this is what you end up with so i've done this um so that it's ready to work on and dry and you can see it's completely dry now i just left it in the sun for half an hour and it was dry and i brushed off the bits of shavings i used both techniques on this paper so the next thing to do is to draw your b because we're going to make a b out of this picture and i'm going to so i've sharpened my pencils and i'm going to draw the b on here like so one thing i will say before you start is to test your pencils on the back so just put down the color and see if they move so take a small brush and some water let's move that over there and just test them and you can see these move really easily can you see that so sometimes it's nice to have some of the pencil lines showing through and then sometimes it's not so i'm just drawing the outline of the wings here like so um yeah up there round and you know this could be anything that you want it to be it doesn't have to be a bee it could be a dragonfly that works really well there's the head of the bee and the eyes and the top part of the body that the wings are attached to and then the bottom part of the body and then we've got some of the antennae coming down and then we've got some legs so the legs come up like so again just rough them in and then you can sort of fiddle about with details later on if you need to so they're my legs so we've now got a basic bumblebee so now i'm just going to color the um the wing parts using a little bit of purple now if you haven't got watercolor pencils i know that a lot of people can't get to shops uh, well they're not open um, but you can order these things online but if you haven't got um, a supply of watercolor pencils then you can just use watercolor just use watercolor in the normal way and color these things in so i'm going to put a, a slightly darker edge around the edge of each wing so in with the purple like this and i'm going to put a few lines because i know that they have some lines on the wings too so again around the edge and this is because i want the wings to look transparent so i'm just going to put a suggestion of shade almost around the outside of the wing and again just put in a few curvy lines here and there make it darker nearer the body that will give it some uh, shape and perspective so there's the wings then we go in with yellow or orange and we're going to put a little bit of yellow here like that and can you see that i'm using the pencil almost in a shape so that bit there would be so i'm i'm sort of changing the direction so i'm going that way with that side and i'm going that way with that side that will give you be a little bit of shape so i'm working around the shape of the body of the bee now if you look closely at guides online of different 
types of bees, then maybe you could make your bee a specific bee. And then we've got the black on the end here. Can you see how I'm shading that? Again, up and down lines, slightly angled on that side, then straighten it up and then slightly angled in the opposite direction on the other side. And again, same here and a little bit on the head and then the eyes. Make those quite dark, so press slightly harder. And then the, uh, uh, the, the um, antennae, like so. We'll probably leave the antennae alone. The legs have a sort of structure like this in circles. Can you see how I'm doing that? So find a, find a drawing of a bee or even a, a photograph of a bee online so you can make it anatomically correct. And last leg here. There we go. And I get lots of bees in my studio. I can hear one at the moment. So the legs, I'm just going to take a touch of brown and I'm just going to colour those in a little. So just a slight amount of colour in each one. And you can see so far I haven't used any water. So that's been really great to have the work dry completely until now. So the best thing to do with any kind of watercolour pencil is to start with the lighter colours first. So wet your brush, use a brush that's appropriate to the size of your work and I'm just going to go in, I'm going to start in the middle, um, well I'm going to start in the middle of the body but I'm going to work left to right. So just add the water, being careful not to touch those black areas for now and just smooth this colour in as much as you want to and you'll see that if there's any spots underneath that bee they may or may not blend in but that is part of the texture so try and leave some of them alone because it adds to the interest of the uh, the bee so I've now smoothed out the yellow and I'm now going to go in and I'm going to put some on the black side and I quite like the texture of this line that is being created by these pencils. So I'm going to leave some of the marks un unpainted because I like the texture. This is up to you. You can do what you want. You can also push the black up at times into the body of the yellow tone that you've put in or bring it down like that. You can see that this is really, really quick and quite fun to do. So it would be really super for outdoor sketching. So this bottom bit, now we'd start to get to see hairy bits coming off the bottom of his body there. So why don't you flick downwards like that so that you get a little bit of a broken edge down the bottom there. So that's his body done. And we're now gonna just clean the brush off and we're gonna work into these legs. So just again, just a suggestion of color on these legs. You know, they're so fine that you don't want to make them too heavy. They're so delicate. And obviously at this time of year, they're so busy that they would be covered in pollen. So you can probably add a little bit of pollen on there as well. Clean your brush off again and just work into these outer edges of your wings. Go around the edge first and then just push it with a broken, shaky hand 
into the middle. Not, don't fill in those wings. You want to be able to remember that they're transparent. You can see through them. So don't go filling them in if you can help it. So around the edge and then along the lines and then a nervous hand just to give yourself some shaky marks. Around the edge, along the lines, shaky marks like so. And then we have it. So if you want to add to your B, if you want to smooth those lines out, you can on his proboscis, not proboscis, is it? And tenai. You can also take the pencil after you've finished wetting the area and you can add in more colour. So if you wanted to put some more or orange in there, for example, then you can. And it'll go on into the wet surface and into the dry surface. So you can play a little bit more with these. Just be careful with the really wet areas that you don't press too hard and rip your paper. And the other thing you can do after, the very last thing, is to take that harder brush again, either an acrylic brush or a um, toothbrush, and pick up some colour. Maybe we'll go in with some yellow again. And just, you can splatter on top like that. And it's quite effective. There we go. Okay, so enjoy your bees. Go and look at them in the garden. Please subscribe, um, leave any comments, ask me any questions and share away. Um, if, if you're doing it with children or if children are doing it, just be careful with the knife. Use a sharpener instead. It's just as good. Um, or get an adult to help you. Okay, thanks for watching. See you again.